you expanded your efforts to solve the problems of teenage runaways and child abuse and pornography, in addition to that other crime problem. And looking around, I can see the diversity of groups that have come forward to participate in this public-private partnership. It's pretty unique, even in this country of ours, where there is so much volunteerism. But your leaders of business here, government, schools, charities, public service organizations, and your talents and resources uh, certainly will be a, of an estimable value in our efforts to protect our nation's youth. So I just want to take this opportunity again to thank you all and to all of those that you who are here represent. And uh, I hope we can put an end to this growing and very terrible problem. Right. Mr. President, does Mr. Gorbachev's letter and offer move the world closer to ridding itself of nuclear weapons? Well, we're very grateful for the offer. We're studying it with great care, and it's going to depend now on what takes place in Geneva. Do you think you're encouraged by that letter? Yes. It's uh, different than things that we've heard in the past from leaders in the Soviet Union. How's that? Thank you. That's enough. Well, it's just about the first time that anyone has ever proposed actually eliminating nuclear weapons. Does it represent any Soviet uh, commitment to negotiate an agreement in Geneva, do you think? The what? Does it represent a new commitment by the Soviets to negotiate an agreement? Well, that's what I meant, that we're going to find out. Okay, thank you. We, we have a meeting we have to get to here. Thank you. refuses to comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. President, uh, as you remember last spring, uh, you mentioned that Americans uh, are angry <coughs> about the crimes that are committed against and uh, sometimes even with children. And at that time, you uh, indicated that you wanted something done about it. And uh, today's meeting and the activities that are portrayed here are part of the response to your challenge. As you know, the Department of Justice has taken up the problems of missing and exploited children as one of our priority criminal uh, investigation and criminal prosecution objectives for this year. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, we have had verification of the concern that you expressed. As a matter of fact, just read here at the table, it was pointed out that, that children are the greatest group in terms of quantitative uh, victims of crime. More, there's general perception that older people are, are more often victims of crime, but actually children are the victims of crime more than any other group. And so uh, doing something about it is in the best interest of the nation. And what we have here uh, is, as, as you mentioned earlier in regard to the partnership uh, that you've engaged in in education, is a public-private partnership which brings together a variety of resources, a variety of backgrounds, skills uh, to work on this problem. Bill McConnell here is serving as chairman of the group. Uh, they've already uh, been hard at work since 8 o'clock this morning, and a great deal of the organizational activity and charting the course has already been done. But, uh, the purpose of, of the group, the, the objectives, are to obtain more accurate information about the nature and magnitude of crimes committed against children, uh, to publicize and promote outstanding child safety programs, and to encourage more people to follow the lead of the those people who have already had successful programs, as well as to enhance the private sector involvement in this issue. And this is an issue that has not had enough uh, private sector attention. Uh, too much of the public uh, publicity that's occurred has been on the incidents and on the, the victims themselves. Not enough attention has been paid to how we can prevent it, what actions we can take uh, to make sure that there aren't even more victims. <laughs> Unless there's some basis for treating them. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> 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 
Today, this may come as a great surprise to you, but we want to talk about the budget for fiscal year 1987. Well, next week, I'll talk about the State of the Union at the speech. When we came here five years ago, I know you've heard this before, but we came to do many jobs, and I think we've accomplished a great deal. But we still haven't completed the task of bringing in the bloated federal budget, and this is the year that we must control runaway federal spending. With Graham loving colleagues in place, the Congress will be forced to address fiscal priorities. And the wrong way to do this, I've said it, and I'll keep saying it, is to raise taxes and death by anyone who's nursing a secret hope that we may turn to them. That's the wrong way. This would rob the American people merely because Congress refuses to cut its pet programs. I'd like to quote a great authority on this whole subject, John F. Kennedy who said with grab the taxes, our true choice is not between the reduction on the one hand and avoidance of larger federal deficits on the other. An economy stifled by restrictive tax rates will never produce enough revenue to balance the budget, just as it will never produce enough jobs or enough profits. And I have to agree with him on that one subject. But I think what we're facing also, I'll quote someone else, is Thomas Jefferson. 1798 said, I wish it were possible to obtain a simple amendment to our Constitution. I would be willing to depend on that alone for the reduction of the administration of our government to the genuine principles of its Constitution. I mean an additional article taking from the federal government the power of borrowing. Now, we can't do anything about that particular thing that he wanted right now, but we can eliminate the borrowing. I think it's wrong also to <coughs> cut defense below what's necessary to preserve national security for ourselves and our children. And the only right way to reduce the federal deficit is to stop the explosion of domestic spending. But this is the right policy, and as I said before, good policy is good politics in the long run. It doesn't mean, as I would say, that every time we suggest cutting, that it means we're taking away from the needy. I think we still have not reached the proper level of how much does it cost to deliver the health to the needy. When we came here, I think I'm safe in saying, because this was true when I was governor a few years before, the federal government was the most expensive level of government in delivering services to the people. And in most cases, it ran two to one, two dollars to deliver one dollar to a needy person. And that's what we have to correct. But I'll need your help in carrying this message to the American people. And Jim Miller will now review the budget and its key themes, which we'll expect you to carry to the public after the screaming and crying has died down. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. First, I want to thank. All right. Good. Good to see you. Well, the last time I came up here, you had a package for me. You remember from my 38th yes. birthday? <laughs> I've got one here for you. Well, thank you very much. It's a 30-some-year-old book that's out of print, and little, it's part of what I want to talk to you about. I called the publisher the other day, and there's a new publisher of this, I've forgotten the name of it now, a fellow with the name of Dolan, and he didn't even know the book. And I said, it's a, it's, it's a book that will have a lot of sales if you reprint it, and that's what I'm calling you about. Well, he said, let me call you back tomorrow. And he called back tomorrow and he said, it must have been a good book. There are only six of them in the warehouse. <laughs> and he sent me a couple of them. Well, uh, they're going to reprint it in paperback. Well, for him it is. It's, it's The Miracle of Philadelphia. Oh. Catherine Minker Bowen's book. You may have read it at the time it came out, 30 some years ago. Well, thank you very great much. Story. Uh, well, great story. Thank you. Great story. How are you? That, that was the year the Eagles won. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that, that was the year that the Eagles won. <laughs> I was an aficionado of his when I was just young. I thought it was either the year that the Eagles won or maybe the Phillies won that year yeah. on the panel. That was the yeah, I think go back to 50 to do that, I think. The whiz kids. That's the miracle in Philadelphia. Uh, that is quite a story. That is a great story. Oh, well, thank you. 
I see you have your eagle out here. Uh, it sent me one of these nice eagles. <laughs> it's too big for him. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put this over here. Let's go over here and sit down. All right. I'll tell you why that eagle is there. Down here. Thank you. The photographer and that eagle used to be back there on that table. And that thing was over there. And they finally told me one day that one of the people who sat at that table came out of the pictures with that eagle and that was sitting on their head. <laughs> well, I don't want to waste your time, but I'll tell you a story I like it. A couple of promotes eight, ten years ago when Lynn Houghton was governor of Virginia. I had been promoting this National Center for State Courts and we finally got it created and they were going to build a three million dollar headquarters on Williamsburg and they did so. And he had pledged a hundred thousand dollars from the bar of Virginia without consulting all the right people. So he called me and said, you've got to get me out of the hole. If you'll come down and make a speech to the bar, it'll fix things a little. So I went down and they took pictures and he and I sitting at the head table while he was governor. And back of him was one of these round lights. And for all the world, it looked like a hill. It just it couldn't have been better. So he sent me two copies and one of my copies said, uh, where is your halo? I signed the one for him, sent it back and said, I never wear my in public. That's a thing in his office. <laughs> well, I've been waiting to see you, as I mentioned in a little letter I'll leave with you, to see if there be three days to go. They call it. Yes, sir. 
have this uh, this shirt. I'm sure you can wear when we beat Army and Navy next year. Thank you. I'm very proud to have all of these. And incidentally, uh, played a little football myself in college, right guard. And uh, somebody says offense or defense. In my day, it was both. <laughs> Until the final whistle, whistle, if you could stay on your feet. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm very pleased and happy. You brought back a memory of those war days that I was telling you about, having come from my original branch and then serving. Of course, it was the Army Air Corps then at the time. But I'll never forget one rainy day when I came to the post with my cavalry campaign hat on. <laughs> The fly boys were <laughs> quite <laughs> 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 um, They were kind of a sombrero type. <laughs> well, listen, thank you all very much. I'm very proud of you. Yes, you will. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Again, I'll do this for I know I can. I guess everyone out here. I feel very well dressed. <laughs> 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 this is good. This is good on you.